everybody. I am Kirsten Mandalay. And um, hey, Patty, do you mind spotlighting me? Um, we want to acknowledge that we gather in San Leandro on the traditional land of the Muwekma Ohlone peoples past and present and honor with gratitude the land itself and the people who have stewarded it throughout the generations. This calls us to commit to continuing to learn how to be better stewards of the land we inhabit as well. We have a couple of people here who are going to talk briefly and we will start with my colleague, Patty. Hi everybody, good morning. Thank you so much to everybody across the world for joining us. I just wanted to say that um, I really appreciate everyone taking time to participate in this book to action event. Uh, just so you know, this was just one of many uh, book to action events. We had a series of them. So we're so happy to have everybody involved in this Fix It Clinic. Um, book to Action uh, was made possible uh, through the California Center of the Book. Uh, it's a joint um, partnership between the Office of Sustainability in San Leandro and our public library, where I work with Kirsten. Um, it's a model that um, kind of elevates the, uh, the book club model, the traditional one. It lets everybody join in and read a book. So everybody gets a copy of a book and then it invites everyone to participate in a series of um, actions, such as going to a fix-it clinic or going to a no-buy group, et cetera. Um, the book that we're featuring is called Drawdown. It's the most comprehensive plan ever proposed to reverse global warming. And it's by Paul Hawken. So everybody who has registered for today, I'll email you. And if you're interested in getting a copy, um, we can get make that happen for you. Okay. Um, and um, at the end of the event, I will actually give um, everybody a survey so that you can give us some feedback about how you think this went and if you enjoyed this. Hopefully it will not be our last one. We've had a, a live one at the library, but due to COVID, it's kind of nice though. It's nice to be able to expand throughout the whole entire world. So thank you so much, everyone. And then I'll also plug our next event, which is a movie, um, Kiss the Ground by Josh Tickle. And then we have a virtual event that you can attend as well. Thanks. All right, Peter, let me spotlight you. So I realized that most people don't get to see what I see, which is all these people from around the world. I develop relations with both the fixers and the repairers. So I just wanna ask you to put your, where you're from in the chat, just so everybody here, because there's pages and pages of you can get a sense of all the people from around the world who are here, uh, Rotimi's from Nigeria. I didn't even know he was showing up today, for example. So it's just great to sort of see us all here and you know, party on. <laughs> all right, I'm doing like too many things at once. Jessica, you're now a co-host, welcome. Hi, Sweden. Um, I'm looking for our next speaker. There you are. Hoife Mock is the city of San Leandro sustainability um, manager. Sorry, I'm trying to also like, there you go, take Peter off and add. Yep, I'm here. Hey, okay. Hi. And I'm going to share my screen. Go ahead and I will share your slide. Okay, great. Um, hi, everybody. Um, this is uh, Jose Mock from City of San Leandro. Um, I'm the same building manager and uh, have been partnering with the library on um, book to action program and also working out uh, future programming as well. Um, so this um, activity is definitely in our larger common action plan. Um, part of what the state's trying to do is to um, really foster a culture of repair and um, kind of reducing um, consumption and um, uh, creating more opportunities for innovation and um, you know, curiosity. 
Um, so as the common action plan goes to council in June, uh, we will be um, further implementing um, the activities uh, within the common action plan, which includes um, having more of these sorts of clinics and then hopefully building out a tool lending library uh, within the San Leandro um, library system so that we can continue to foster um, this type of community. So I'll pass it back over to uh, Kristen. All right, Anya, you're next. And I'm gonna just stop the share. There you are. Hi, thank you so much for having me here today. Thank you, Peter, for suggesting I come along. Um, I've been to you guys a couple of times before. You're absolutely brilliant. Um, that's self-evident, um, and thank you. Um, but today, I've just got one minute to quickly explain something that you may, um, some of you may want to get involved with. It's a campaign, a social media campaign called Pollution is Pants. That's the hashtag. Pants meaning underpants, not trousers. Um, <laughs> And uh, it's pants in England means it's rubbish. So pollution is pants is, is all about um, how fashion, fast fashion has a huge pollution, has a huge um, rubbish impact. Um, the focus is on uh, celebrating pre-loved, secondhand, vintage, inherited clothes, anything that you have in your wardrobe that you um, have got from somebody else that someone else wore before you. Um, and the pants reference in the hashtag is also that pants are the only thing you can't get secondhand, which is probably just as well. Um, so for the next week, running across Fashion Revolution Week until the 25th of April, coinciding with Earth Day next week as well, we're asking, I'm asking, I'm collaborating with Transition St. Andrews as well here in, in Scotland, um, we're asking people to take a picture of themselves um, in their favourite pre-loved outfits and hold up a little placard that says pollution is pants. Um, describe the item and give a shout out to whoever or wherever you got it from. So I'm a big part of this is promoting all the secondhand retailers there are online and obviously all the charity shops that we know about, but there's loads of online, um, huge online secondhand clothing market, which actually I didn't know about, um, as well as the rental market. So if anyone wants to get involved, if you look up the hashtag pollution is pants, you can find us easily online. Um, and my organization is called Big Dreams Little Footprints, which you can also Google and, and find out more about it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Anya. <laughs> okay. Anya, please feel free to put that in the chat. Indeed. All right, so Peter, did you wanna do anything before I start the participants? No, I think we're ready to rock. Okay. Um, so I'm going to be calling on folks who um, have an item that needs to be fixed, and Molly, you're going to be first, um, and then I'll put your name in the chat when you're going to be the next person to speak. So um, you'll have about a minute or two to tell us and show us what's going on with your item, and fixers can ask clarifying questions or advise you of what tools that you're going to need to have handy. And, but we want to keep fixing to the breakout rooms as usual. So I'm going to look for Molly here. And sorry, I got to go through everybody. <laughs> All right, Molly, go for it. All right. Well, hi, everyone. So we're here in our kitchen with our beloved vintage oven. And let's see, I'm just going to take the camera off here. Go on a little. So this is um, the same oven that Samantha had in Bewitched. So it's very fancy and futuristic. It's got this glass door that lifts straight up. Um, some issues with that too, we might get to later. But really, what we want to look at is this heat minder function. So it has one burner that's supposed to keep a consistent temperature, but it is broken. It's either on or off. And it has a thermal couple here. And yeah, Eric, you've done more uh, research on it. So is there anything else to add? Um, it, we do have the manual for it. Uh, fortunately, we were able to dig that up. And uh, the, that was back when manuals actually had useful troubleshooting information in them. So uh, there are steps to diagnose the problem um, that I haven't taken yet, uh, but could to sort of narrow it down to whether it's an electrical switch problem or whether it's a problem with the actual thermocouple, which is like a thermostat 
the, the number two trees, which is on and off for an electrical thing. Um, yeah, that's about as far as we've gotten. It oh, it's a Frigidaire Flare Custom Imperial model. There's a few different models, uh, and and they they vary throughout the years. I think this is a. 67? Yeah. Any fixers have any questions real quick? Uh, yeah, it's Mark. What tools do you have to do diagnosis with? I have a multimeter and I don't know, Lots just about anything else. Yeah. You could want. Finding the tools is the, the only issue, but we have them all somewhere. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah to, to me, it sounds like either the thermostat is grown or there's a wire break somewhere in the circuit that uh, is basically meaning that, you know, the the system is basically saying, give me all the heat you got, and there's nothing saying turn it off, which to me sounds like the thermostat. Yeah. Okay, we'll find the multimeter. Great. Next is Myra. Myra, gonna need volume real quick. Unmute. Thank you. I'm muting my phone, but I'm never mind. Anyhow, here's the the situation: is that um, I have this printer. It's a Epson 7610, and I dearly love it, or I loved it until it stopped working. In particular, the red stopped working. So, a month ago, I presented this at Fixit Clinic and was greatly helped by. Uh, Brian and Phil, and they encouraged me and walked me through taking out the printhead. So I think you can see the printhead, and I have um, got cleaner and stuff that they suggested, and I have worked diligently to get the printhead clean, and I hope it's going to work. So I'm here today to hopefully get help to reinstall the printhead. I might be able to do it myself, but I'd feel much more comfortable having my um, worldwide coaches help me with this project, and then we will all see if it works. So. All right. Great. Any quick questions? Just to say that it's, it's Brian here who helped Myra last time. I've just uh, given Phil a nudge. She's um, uh, not far from here. And uh, he's just logged on as well. So we're, we, we will probably Great. pick up where we left off. Uh, I wanted to give Phil a nudge because I know he's given you some advice on emails about this as well. So um, I, I, I guess we'll probably fall in and, uh, and, and get it back together again. Exactly. So it should be interesting. And I did buy new cartridges. So um, that won't be the problem. At any rate, no. yeah, it's 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 a reassembly job. You, you're of course assuming that we can remember how to put it back together again. We were very good at taking it apart, but right? I, and I might be able to figure it out, but I'd much rather wait now and have you help me. So thank you. So much. Great. All right, is Anne from Minnesota here today? Anne. Okay, Kim. Are you ready? Hi, everybody. Uh, this is my first actual visit to a uh, fix it clinic. A uh, couple years ago, I donated a huge paper shredder to a group and they fixed it. And I gave them a case of beer for that. It was a separate, it wasn't really an open session. Today, I'm here to show you my favorite electric bat or my battery operated pencil sharpener from the 80s and it a batter it's the best pencil sharpener i've ever had it lasts the batteries last for years but unfortunately i left the batteries in and now it's not working new batteries don't solve it uh i've taken it apart and put it back together once and now I pretty much have it taken apart and I'm not quite sure how to get it back together. I've started cleaning the contacts with vinegar because that might be part of the problem. The only other uh, 
piece that might not be working is this little motor. <laughs> And I haven't taken that apart. It didn't seem amenable to that. So this is my last attempt to try to salvage this. And I'm looking forward to anybody's suggestions. Is there any white deposit on the battery contacts? Um, well, there's two battery contacts. Two of the contacts are, well, I doubt that you can see. Uh, our one is nice and shiny and one is kind of corroded looking and the other one is kind of corroded looking too but there's no white stuff on it i think all the battery gunk is gone yeah well it sounds like you've just got corroded contacts so you might need a little bit of steel wool or some sandpaper some very fine sandpaper to clean them off with i haven't tried that i will try that oh. a fine emery board works great too yeah and, and May I suggest a low budget fix? Sure. Uh, sometimes if you wad up some tin foil and put it between the battery and the contact, it'll work. Oh, I like that. It's kind of hard to reach the contact that's at the bottom of the case. I, I, I You can't really take that bit apart. A Q-tip? Q it'll be a so challenge. The, the, yeah. the other thing you can use is the uh, a pencil eraser. You know, just take take the end of okay. a pencil, shove it down there and twirl it around. So foil, pencil, and then uh, fine steel wool and pencil eraser. Thank and you. Kim, Chris asked if um, the old batteries leaked, did you look at the circuit parts to check for corrosion as well? Um, the circuit parts, I'm not sure what that is. I don't believe that that unit has a circuit board. There's but no circuit in this. It's you could, you could it's check the motor. You don't need to take it apart. Just connect uh, the batteries directly to the motor and see if it spins. OK. Oh. I'm not sure how to connect the batteries directly to there it. There are two contacts, the little it's things on the side with the holes. That's where oh. you connect the batteries. OK. Thank you. All right, Leslie, you're up next. Welcome. Mute myself. Hi, thank you, everybody. Um, okay, so I have this lamp. This, like, it has, like, um, it doesn't have a name brand. All it has is, like, says it's made in Hong Kong. It says it has to use a certain kind of GE bulb, which I bought. Uh, and then, you know, you just put, you put the bulb in, and then you hit the high or the low, and nothing happens. <laughs> it. Okay. Do you have a multimeter? Oh, no. <laughs> okay. All right. I have only, the only thing I have is this. <laughs> no, I have this, but not have you tried? Like sorry, have you tried plugging it in and, and wiggling the cord near the plug? Because sometimes oh, yeah. the cords fray and they break. Inside the insulator. Yeah, I'm trying it now. It's not doing anything. Have you replaced the bulb? Yeah, yeah, I just bought them. A couple times. Both of them. Okay. Okay, Kate, you are up next. Let's see if I can find you. Kate, I saw you. I'm going through the list, everybody. Kate, are you here? I'm not seeing a Kate on our list. Okay. Um, Sakina from Minneapolis. Hi. Hi. Let me find you on the list. Sorry. So we, we have this um, bar stool that wiggles. Um, oh. And I tried to tighten it. And we have another one all ready to go with our tools beside us. Okay. It's a gas lift. A gas lift bar stool. bar stool. Yeah. Okay. All right. Wait, and what's the problem with it? Sorry, what was that again? What is the problem with the, the base plate? Is on the so, yeah, the base plate oh. is loose and it wiggles. Okay. Can you turn it upside down so we can see the bottom? Sure. 
Okay, that's what will need to be opened up. Yeah, I have the okay. tools to open it up too. Well, you, you probably just need actually to tighten up the uh, Allen screw there. And... In the middle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so I've, I've, I've tried that with this as well, um, going in both directions. It still doesn't tighten it up and it still wiggles. We'll have to take it apart and see. Yeah, okay. maybe the threads are stripped. Okay. So, it... Or there's a part that slides up and down in the tube. It's become loose. It's not supposed to slide. Okay. I mean, there has to be some way of resecuring it. Actually, that's not where it wiggles. Take a look at it. Sorry, what was that? It's it it wiggles down here at this the point. The bottom here. part there is the plate, the chrome plate, and the plastic plate itself are not tied to each other properly. What you're probably going yeah, to have to do is put some stuff. stress on. You'll the, have to take it apart and see. Right, but you'll, you'll have to put some stress on the um, post by essentially tr trying to bend it and then use the uh, hex allen key to, to okay. loosen it to get it apart. Um, okay. Curious about why you decided to uh, swipe right on my profile. Whoops. <laughs> All right, so Elizabeth, can you go next? Hi. Remember to unmute when you get a chance. Still muted. You need to unmute. Okay. There, is that good? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, so I have a brother typewriter that um, is not typing. So I um, want to work on that. And when I turn it on, you can hear it. Hold on. Can you hold it up so we can see it, please? Or maybe move your camera down? Okay. Hey, kids, do you know what a typewriter is? Yep. <laughs> So when you type or it, um, it starts to almost like make a grinding noise, but the, um, the keys don't hit. And I've tried, change, I've tried changing the cartridges. That's a mechanical issue. A cartridge won't fix that. Yeah. So I've, I've tried a different, a couple of different things to troubleshoot it and uh, haven't been successful, so somebody can help me with that. That'd be great. You'll have to open it up and check the clutch. Are there any tools she'll need? I yeah. have a hammer and a screwdriver and a Phillips and air duster and different size um, screwdrivers. Okay, that's a good start. Okay. Alvin is asking if it's an electric or mechanical typewriter. It's electric, right? It's electric. I thought. Okay. Um, Rachel, you're up next. Yeah. Hello. I have a regular convection, a kind of a fancy oven, convection toaster oven. That's my neighbor's. And it turns on. Oh, it's not very good screen there. But there's a screen here that lights on. You turn it on, off. There's a function that, sorry, you can't see that, but there's like, actually, Part of the problem is that these, uh, so this changes it to like toast, bagel, bake, roast. And then there's a temperature gauge that works. I mean, that, that changes. There's the time, or night Celsius, uh, um, a, a function for, for frozen, and uh, a fan. So the buttons seem to engage. Um, the wind starting preheating the fan comes on and then it does all this stuff except for it doesn't ever actually heat so there's some kind of circuit or something that's short I have a multimeter i'm intimidated to take it apart and i'm not very good with the multimeter and you can you possibly state what the problem is the problem is that it does not heat okay there's no heat Hi. no heat correct right. thank you so the, the fact that it doesn't heat, a lot of the newer appliances have these things called thermal fuses in them, 
which if mm -hmm. if things get too hot, they'll just melt and, and none of the heat comes on. So yeah. you're going to have to take it apart uh, and, and basically check out both the main element using the multimeter and look for a thermal fuse. I'll, I'll post a link to a picture of a thermal fuse in the chat. Okay. Okay. Does the display light up at all? Yeah, the yes, display lights up. What is the branded model number? It is called a Brevil, B-R-E-V-I-L-L-E, -L -L -E, and there's a long model number. I can type it in. Oh, somebody already did. Thanks, Peter. <laughs> Thank you. Correct. Cool. Okay, Anne, are you ready? So, Rachel, if you have a screwdriver, you can start Ready taking off the cover. That's a good thing to do. Okay. And are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Hold on, let me. But unplug it first. There you go. Hi, I'm Ann from Santa Rosa. And I have, I'm not too sure if, um, I'll just tell you what it is. I have a, um, a KitchenAid mixer, and when I turn it on, I can't get it to do a medium or low speed. It just really whirs around really fast. Mm -hmm. And I, I know that I basically, could you give me a hint on how I should start on fixing it? Like should take the back off maybe and then look at the insides or what? Is it, is it a hand mixer or a, a stand mixer? It's a stand mixer. It's one of those big kitchen aids, you know, with the- uh, uh -huh. Yes. Can you show it? Yes, I can. Yes, I can. That's what I'm sorry. Yes, I will do that. Yeah. Okay, it's a hinged up unit. Okay. There it is. Mm -hmm. It's old. It's I think it's it's like back in maybe nineteen, maybe early two thousand or you know it's pretty old and it's just it may you know I'm sure I can fix and get a few more years out of it, but that's it. No, yeah. those things are great. Those are that, that thing should last forever. It's worth it's worth fixing. I think. Oh yes, and like, parts are parts are readily available. Parts are available. Oh, what do I do? Call KitchenAid or get, go online? First, you have to figure out what part you need. Yeah. You are able to move the speed control, but the speed does not change. Is that correct? Is yeah. that like when, when, like, I'll show you. Do you want me to turn it on and show you? Uh, that, you can do that in the room. Okay. Well, what it is, there's a speed control that they have. Yeah. Um, yep. You know, one, two, three, can four, you and move on that? one, it's doing like eight speed. Okay. I put it on Fine. one, yep. and it's just zipping around really fast. Can you, like can really... you move the button? Can you move the button from one end to the other? Yeah, yeah. Well, when Enjoy. I start Enjoy. it slow, it's fast, and then it just won't go slow. Right. Yeah. It's the They'll controller be... itself. The contact yeah. in the controller is not. They'll good. be able to help you in the room. Okay, he can. Okay, so but you know yeah, pretty much what it is then. They'll, they'll, yeah, they'll be able to help yeah. you. Okay, great. Thanks a lot. All right. Great. Are you ready? Maybe she can get started on opening up the top of that mixer. Sure. Yeah. What do I do? The back of it? You know, there's a trim. There's you a trim take, ring. You have to take yeah. the back off. Yeah. Onto yeah. the hinge. Take the whole top section off. Turn it upside down. The whole there top section of mean off the stand, off wait, the wait, neck wait, wait a minute. There's a trim ring that has to come off to take the top exactly. off. There's a lot of work that needs to be done to take the whole top off of that. That's probably best be done in the room. That, that, I could that, I could start there's unscrewing. There's a bunch of deep things. screws. Yeah. There you go. Just remember where they come from. We're gonna yeah, just, uh, to cookie. Hold on. Is there somebody else? Does somebody else is on? I'm am I through with mine? Yes. We're gonna move on because we're gonna have you do that in the breakout room if you don't mind. And okay, I don't mind. Okay, I'll I'll mute myself and go. Thank you. Cookie, are you ready to tell us what's going on with your dishwasher? I mean, your sewing machine. You're showing me a dishwasher, but you signed up for a sewing machine. You're going to need to unmute Cookie. I'm the sewing machine. I think I'm next, Joe. Yes, Cookie. 
Cookie, are you ready? Cookie is muted. Cookie, you need to end. Oh, I have I have a dishwasher. I don't know if there's supposed to be a sewing machine person going. Nope, it's you. Sorry, I broke okay. the sewing machine. No worries. Uh, so I haven't used my dishwasher in probably the past year. Uh, it was just not getting things clean. And I tried um, like a commercial, uh, I don't know, some sort of cleaner thing. Um, I think I've made some dents on the filters, but uh, haven't had any success. Uh, the model, it's a KitchenAid and the model is KDFE104DSS0. What's the problem? Uh, it's just, I think that, I think that, like, honestly, it's been a, a long time since I've used it. Um, the dishes weren't getting clean. I think they were, I feel like they were kind of greasy or there was like a, a film. And like I said, I've tried to use the commercial cleaner and, and clean the filters and maybe I- Can you point the camera toward the bottom of the dishwasher? Yeah. How's that? Is, uh, is this a dishwasher that you own? Like- that I own? Yeah, like it's like, are you, like, I'm assuming you're not renting a place, Correct. right? Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. So have you noticed when you open the door, is uh, it hot inside if you interrupt a cycle? Uh, it's been like a year since I've used it. Um, so I could try running a cycle and seeing if it is hot. Not only not the only film on things, a lot of times if the, the water doesn't get hot enough, it won't melt the grease. And uh, mm. so then it could be a heating element issue. But, uh, and I guess it, you don't know if that uh, does get hot or not. The other possibility right. that the detergent dispenser isn't working. So you are only running it with clean water and not using the detergent. Mm. I can you show the power panel with the buttons on the front? Oh, hold on. Do you have hard water in your area? I I don't think it's especially hard. Does the the bottom where the um, the arms are does that come off in the filter and a filter underneath able to be removed? Our dishwashers that way and we often have to take it out and just um, mm -hmm. soak it and scrub it and make sure that that part is clean. Um, so I don't know about the arms. I, I tried to do this one and I think this one, it doesn't look great right now. <laughs> um, uh, so those I think I can remove. The filter on that model is that four inch round thing. Um. Okay. And that should unscrew slightly and lift up. Yeah. Uh, that's a fairly new model. It should blink lights if there's yeah, error codes too. Just with the heating element out. or any other interruption to the process. Yeah. Lift, the arm. lift those blades out. Before you take the filter out, lift the blades out. Lift the whole arm up. Yeah. There you go. <sighs> It, yeah, it may is need there to... a knob in the middle that unscrews? Oh, I don't know. No, not on this model. No, the... yeah. It's have... best done in the breakout room. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. So, actually, I think, unless anybody added at the last minute, I think we've made it through all of the items to be fixed today. Peter, is there, is there anybody else? Does anybody want to jump in? What about me, Kirsten? Uh, what's okay. Mine's the sewing machine. What's your name? Jen McLeod, East Sussex, UK. Jen? In room, you put me in room 12. What's your first name? I'm sorry, I can't see you. <laughs> Joe, J-O. Joe, yeah, let me find you and pop you up. There we go. Okay, good stuff, right. right. Thanks so much, Joe. I'm using a laptop, so it's a bit more difficult to see what's going on. All right, so this is my sewing, this is a charity shop sewing machine. 
and it's um, it's not a very expensive one. It's a silver crest. 8750 and I think it comes from a discount supermarket so I've um, done everything I've threaded it I've cleaned it I've oiled it I've checked everything that I could possibly think of but what it won't do is thread hang on I don't know if you can see that so it won't loop so the top thread won't pick up the bottom thread okay. I've adjusted the the height of the needle, which okay, is meant, to, it's meant it's to do something. Have, to to check, have to check the hook timing. Well, let's find out if the hook is moving at all first. Yeah. Let's let's put it in our bag. Yeah. We'll take a look. Joe, can you shine okay. some more light yeah. on the hook area? Yeah. Hang on. If I can, you see that? That's a little better. Down lower and to the left, maybe. Or turn the machine. That's a little better. Good. That's yeah. Okay, the hook's okay, it's turning. It, it's doing the right things. It just the needle just doesn't yeah, we'll, we'll want to pick look. up the bottom thread. Okay. Looks like the timing. Is yeah. Up. Okay. The stuff. You can fix that in the I think room. it is timing. Yes. yes. That's all. All right. <laughs> Let me pop up here again. Um. Hi, everybody. I'm gonna. So before we go into breakout rooms, is there anybody else left who? was on our list, like Anne from Minneapolis with the Vintage Radio. Anne, are you there? Or Kate from Richmond with her office chair? Going once. But not in the participant list. Okay. And, and so guys, when you go into the breakout rooms, don't forget to report back here after you're done, particularly the participants. Let the participants tell us what happened in the breakout room and what they learned and stuff like that. So, yeah. and we don't have to fix it today, okay? I mean, we can get them to a point where maybe there's something that would take more than we could spend time today to do. And we can always continue these either at the next Zoom or in the Global Fixer server on Discord. So. Okay. Uh, yes, please remember and continue your show and tell when you are done. And so I've got a bunch of breakout rooms. Um, number 12 is going to be Cookie with the dishwasher, and number 14 is going to be Joe with the sewing machine. And um, you should be able to move yourself <laughs> to the breakout rooms. Um, please let us know if you need any assistance. Patty and I and Peter can I'm, help you. I'm sorry, what breakout room was I in should be at in Santa Rosa? Let me look at the list. I think your name is on there, Anne. Well, I missed it. I was in the try to use the toilet. I'm sorry. We're Anne from Santa Rosa. You are after Rachel. Okay. I'm at, is that true? I'm after Rachel. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Do you want to present, Anne? I already did. You did. I just don't know where I go now. Oh. Are you Anne Shippy? Yeah. Yes, I'm Anne Shippy from Santa Rosa. And I presented my, my KitchenAid. They told me they could help me. There is a there's a breakout room called Anne KitchenAid Mixer. Where is it? If you look at the breakout room list, just oh, scroll down that? past the names. Oh, and I see. Oh, I didn't realize that. Okay, here we go. Okay, thank you so much. Then I can find it. That's what I'm here for. Okay, Kristen, thank you so much. Kristen, what breakout room is Elizabeth in for the um, typewriter? Look for the one that's titled Little Elizabeth Brother Typewriter. So just go to the square where it says breakout rooms and then click on the... Uh, yeah, you're going to see a bunch of names and then you're going to see the breakout rooms that are named and yours has a name on it. Okay. Everybody else, the only people who have numbered ones are 12 and 14. So we do that now? Yep, go ahead and join that. Does anybody need any help moving to a room? Um, yeah, why don't you put me in the dishwasher room? This is Steve Burl. You got it. Is there a way to put yourself in the rooms these days? Yeah, you should be able to um, figure out how to move you. <laughs> um. Steve, whenever you update Zoom, I mean, the latest version allows you to basically let participants assign themselves to a breakout room. Yeah, yeah. how do you do it? You, uh, you just click on the name of the room or something? Yep. You click on breakout rooms and then the name of the room and you can go and you just click join. Join. I'm looking for the Which one are you going to? 
Or do you need help still? Um, I'm a, it was dishwasher, right? There, I don't think anybody's in dishwasher. It says Cookie and oh, one. Tom yeah. Johnson. Oh, you're going to Cookies? You're in 12. I just we are doing. All right. Hey, Kirsten, I do not see the breakout rooms. OK, Alan, where would you like to go to? I'll try uh, the dishwasher also. But can you help me? Why aren't I seeing any idea? I'm moving you now. You should get a little pop up. We think it's because you don't have the latest version of Zoom. <laughs> it should be 5.5 or higher if you go to the little eye of the of the Zoom you can see if you have the latest version. I will check. Thank you. I'm, have, I'm having trouble too. I want to go to Myra's room and it looks like she's in is a breakout room. Oh, I see. I can just click on the room and yeah. click join. Oh, I got it. Thank okay. you. Sure. Does anybody else need help moving to a room? I'm here for that. It's not so obvious. I didn't realize that there were so many different versions and you had to keep updating it. Yeah, I just updated on Thursday because, yeah, they keep updating and changing. Thanks so much, Deanna. Thanks for joining us. She go. That's my next door neighbor, literally. Oh. <laughs> All right, Jessica, how's Lund, Sweden? Yeah, actually, we've had pretty nice weather this week. It's cool, but sunny. <laughs> so yeah, the days are getting longer. It's it's good. Hopeful. Um, okay. All good. I saw you have an event coming up at the university. Yeah, we have we have an event just on how to do repair cafes because we're the only ones in Sweden right now um, with a UK group that reached out to us, but we've never met them before, so it's a bit of a blind date on that one. <laughs> so yeah, we have no idea what to expect next Friday, <laughs> what we're what we're actually doing. So that'll be fun. But in June, we're hosting the the midsummer uh, repair cafe. Oh, so great. Also, we'll put flowers in our hair and be um, oh. Swedish without the horror, because I know right. they made the, the horror <laughs> film about it a couple of years ago. But um, <laughs> we actually do do everything other than the sacrificial. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I'll try to do yeah. it. I'll, I'll get me a flower crown. We do that. dance and sing some, some funny songs around a maypole with the leaves and all of that's true. But yeah. <laughs> I haven't done it yet in Sweden, but um, probably not this year due to COVID, but maybe. Yeah, yeah, sure. definitely. It's fun. Yeah. Is it your university that does like um, sharing of um, student items like bedding and whatever students need? Do you kind of like recycle or that's another university that does that? That is a, an organization in our town run by students of the university actually. So it's Circle Center. Um, basically who started a library of things for the students um and yeah the the bedding is really is really cool because they they do long-term rentals basically for the students so those students coming for a term or even the year can basically rent their bedding for the year yeah 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 we it's talked crazy. about it at a previous um event and i just i thought that was so smart because um all that stuff just ends up in dumpsters you know, students use it for a year and it's dumped out. And that's where they got a lot of it too. I have to say, yeah. for the Circle Center, they they just scoured around at the end of term and get a lot of the stuff. Um, but they're going to be co-hosting with us in June um, too because they have a lot of things that they'd like to learn how to maintain. Um, so I, I told them, and they also get a lot of things like students bring over from the UK and they have to change the plugs to an EU plug. So like fixes like this that keep it functional longer that they they reached out to to the repair cafe so i was like come come to our event and maybe we can do a couple of breakout rooms with them yeah That's so it's awesome. a bit fun yeah. yeah very cool idea at uc berkeley can, can, I, can i get somebody to, to put me in the kitchen aid dishwasher room this is so you didn't, uh, it we says you room haven't 12, joined but it. it seems like everybody's in the one called christina kitchen aid dishwasher but I don't seem to have a join button in my screen and I have the latest version of Zoom and I don't know what's going on with that. And Steve, oh. which one did you want to join? Christina want... KitchenAid dishwasher, please. Okay. Do you got it, Patty? Um... Oh, he's been assigned, he just needs to join. 
Um, I'm not. I so hope I sure hope you join. got a message. The join, the join dialogue just popped up. Good. Okay. I hope you got in. Okay. Sure. So I'm new to this. Can people pop into a new room after they're finished at one room? Could you go from KitchenAid to maybe dishwasher when yeah. you're interested in something? That's cool. Yep. Yeah. You can roam. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. And you're welcome to like join one if you want to see um what it's like okay i think i'll try it this is, yeah. I'm into this. This is great around. Yep. i'm gonna go check out what's happening in the lamp room so i'll see you in a bit bye does anybody remaining here need help getting into a breakout room yeah i'm just checking which ones are there i i, I missed the part so. Thomas. Hello. Is there a reason why private chat is, is disabled? Um, that it should not be disabled. Looks to be. Who do you want to talk to? <laughs> That's a private question, no? <laughs> this is true. <laughs> to you, of course. <laughs> <laughs> if you go see it i can click of course i'm a co-host but if you go to everyone down at the bottom and then you can find somebody yeah but that's only because you're a host yes i think he's right you when like for example i can't see that part either but it might be because my software is not updated as well you're a co-host too so Am you I? Oh, okay yep how do I move? It? it might be an older version of Zoom. Peter right. surely knows. So. Yeah. Or Jessica. She's a Zoom uh, wizard. So. <laughs> Kirsten, it's okay to make Tomas a co host. See if that gives him the capability then. Sure. He's okay. We trust him. <laughs> I'll take your vouch for him. Whoa. Thank you, Peter. That's a. Uh... Got some power now. With great power comes great responsibility. For us. Yeah, I, I no longer dare to chat now. <laughs> Do you have any questions, Patty? How's it going? I'm still trying to join. Something. Let's see. Which one are you going to? Um, I was interested in the KitchenAid mixer actually, and the typewriter. Both of those were interesting to me. But I don't know how to make myself go in there. This is. I just popped awesome. you over. Do you see it? Yes. Thank you. Is uh, is Cece taking care of the sewing machine? What's the question? Uh, is CC taking care of the sewing machine? It's she's no. the, um, the the singer goddess, or uh, how do you call it? Sewing machine whisperer. Whisperer, but, yeah. But she, but when she doesn't see that there's going to be a sewing machine, she doesn't come. Uh, so, so I just texted her to okay. see if she would show up. But I don't know what she's doing today. <laughs> Pro probably testing an exoskeleton again, huh? <laughs> Like one of the previous times. So. Okay, I'm uh, trying to join room 14, just checking. Okay, see you guys later. Bye. Bye. I like it when the main room empties out like this. It's great, just uh, it's, you feel like everybody's doing stuff. But let's take a quick, or is this every, item have coaches? That's a good question. Yeah, it looks okay.
Okay, lamps are coming back to report. Cool. Thanks, Jessica. Okay, Leslie, let's hear about your lamp. I, I, I ideally want the person whose item it is to tell us what they figured out. Yeah. Tell us what happened, Leslie. Um, well, I don't have a multimeter. And then, um, like, so the, all the nice guys had a couple suggestions. They said that, uh, oh, something about the plate here, that the plate that the ball pushes in, maybe it's just moving around, I guess. And then the other thing was something like that. And then um, there's four screws here, but it has like a safety screw and I don't have the right screwdriver bit. Um, so that I have to get those two and I, so I have to get a multimeter thing and I have to get the screw bit thing. Um, but they, so they did a couple of different things. Had me check, um, had me check this wire that goes from the bulb down where it bends on all these parts to make sure like it's not frayed, that kind of thing, um, you know, and then had me um, also turn it on and, and then touch all the wire all the way down to make sure um, nothing's loose in there or something like that. I hope I'm explaining it correctly. Um, and then, and then, and then we, we unscrewed, I unscrewed the screws that is holding this whole element head cap thing in there, but um, it won't come out and someone said it's probably because it's the wires hooked up to it. So it's holding it in place. Okay, thank you. So you you can bring this back next time, or if you don't want to wait till then, we have the Global Fixer server too, and we can sort of try to continue this repair there. Um, How do I sign up? I'll send you the link, or email okay. me again, and I'll send you the link. Thank you, everybody. I really appreciate it. Hey, thanks for being a contestant. <laughs> thanks for playing the game. Um, this looks like somebody's sharing the screen. Yeah, what's that about? Sorry, do, do we have a do we have a fixer available for the typewriter thing? Um, I'm a little bit out of my depth on that one. Can you repeat that? I'm not sure. I, I was I was wondering if we have a fixer available for the typewriter. Uh, it's just I'm I'm a bit out of my depth on that one. Oh, good question. Kirsten, you can send a message. Um, Write an announcement to, to the three. breakout rooms and say anyone able to join the typewriter room. Mm -hmm. How do I do? Oh, here it is. Hey, Kirsten. Hey, Kirsten. Thank you. Um, is there anyone else that's uh, in need or like, you know, I could help out with? Because like I said, the typewriter I'm out of my depth on, so. Let's see. Um, Leslie. So, so it, it doesn't show you who the other, doesn't show you who's in what rooms? Um, I can see, but I don't know who the fixers are. So I don't yeah, know. We don't. <laughs> You're welcome to go around and take a look at other. Yeah. Rooms here. Okay, I'll just I'll just hop rooms then. Okay. Jump okay. around and enjoy. All right. Thanks, all. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Nice hat, Chris. As usual, sombrero.
Looks like we, Kelvin joined the typewriter. Oh good, Greg is moving to the typewriter. What's the story with the duck? I like it. I salvaged it off this beat to Berkeley yesterday and I just thought it would be, I tell people to put something whimsical in the window. So I thought I should do the same thing. Indeed. Nice duck. <laughs> He's actually, he's got some problems. He's got a hole in the bottom. Looks like a piece of buckshot came in the side under his, so he's, he's a sorry duck. <laughs> he's lived to tell the tale. I don't know. <laughs> I, I have about half a dozen antique ones that are carved out of wood. Yeah, this one's molded out of plastic. I had some, um, I had a pair that I gave away on my buy nothing group, but they were a pretty cute pair. I was pretty proud of them. Try that again. I'm going to leave this point and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Take care. Bye. Mark. Thanks for joining us, Rick. Hey, Peter, I'm probably going to sign up for the next one for my CD player. And or doorknob. <laughs> you still working on that doorknob? Well, I paused because I was dealing with termites, so I have not been working on the doorknob. But I do have somebody to email about it. He's the, um, he was the expert. I haven't emailed him yet. Yeah, the joys of home ownership. Right? Termites are almost done. I have a couple more projects to do. But it's good. Steve, are you still having trouble moving around in rooms? We can move you. Yeah, I, I don't have a join button. And then I looked over on the help pages for Zoom, and it says that um, for Mac users, um, that I may need a. Uh, it says, wait, where did it go? It was there. Um, the host will need to invite you to the breakout room, it says. <laughs> And then do you want to go, Steve? I can do it. No, but I want to understand. But it says <laughs> that there is some way that the um, that the host can set it up so I don't need that. And it seems like something. It says if the host has allowed participants to self-select and join breakout rooms as they're choosing, participants will be able to view and select from the list. Now I don't seem to be able to do that. It might be your version of Zoom, but I'm I, have, I have the latest version. It says you have to have 5.3 or greater, and I have 5.6 something. Okay. So oh, I'm just curious if there's something that some button that has to be turned on by the host to allow me to join. It's already on. It's on for everybody. Yeah. Not by by for each individual user. It is not. Yeah, I set it up. I wonder if it's because I joined the early the meeting before you. Um, Maybe I'll hang up and then join back in. Yeah, try that. Let's see if yeah, that works. I'm just trying to figure out the problem, you know. Yeah, troubleshooting for sure. Being a fixer and all. It's it's our way. All right. I'm going to be right back.
Okay, I'm going to change the video to me or try to. Okay. I think I figured it out. It's just operator error. There's a number that shows the number of people in the breakout room. And it's if you roll over the number, it shows you the join button. <laughs> so it's operator error on my part. Sorry about that. Great. No problem. I'm All right. glad you figured you it know, out. Do you know a specific room where they need help? No. Uh, if you could do me a favor, I mean, just do, do a little inventory. Yeah. Just check every room, see, what, see what's going on there. Hop around. OK. Yeah. Kirsten, in addition to turning off your video, you should unmute because we can hear you walking around. Are you calling me? Yeah, you should mute too because you're. We can hear you walking around, and it puts the video on your um, page. And Sorry, I have to go grab one more thing. It's just you and me at this point. I'm pretty sure. I know Faye, Faye is lurking there, but. Mark Stengel has logs in twice, so he's in another room, so. Oh, okay. But, and I realized I forgot to mute too. So this is going remarkably smoothly, given that, oh, somebody's coming back. Oh, Sakina's coming back to report, great. What were you saying, Peter? Oh, Sakina's come back to report on his, on his bar stools. Yeah. Hi, Sakina. Yeah. How'd it go? Um, great. Um, they gave us some ideas. We were not able to do the fix, but I think um, they gave us some good ideas on what we need to do to try and move it forward. Um, so I'll need to get an, another pair of strong hands and um, some other items and then a longer breaker bar and try and do it that way. Cool. So I researched a bunch of these because there were going to be two gas shock people this time. There was also this woman with a chair who didn't show up. Um, there are websites that show how you take apart these kinds of, there's a gas shock in the center. And right. And so basically there's a bunch of websites where they sell replacement gas shocks, which I don't think is your issue, but they kind of show how you do this kind of general disassembly. So if you look at those, 
but, and we're also continuing, if you join the Discord server, we can continue to help you there some okay. more in between the Zoom events if for some reason you get stuck. Okay, well, I think what we do is we'll get the uh, suggestions that they did to see if we can just break the seal and break the, um, the Allen wrench tightness to loosen everything up and then try and retighten it. Okay. All right, well, you're welcome to look around at some other thing if you want or Okay, or leave. thank Make you, sure. we'll, we'll check that out. We appreciate your time and help. Sure Am I thanks. supposed to comment or? Uh, oh yeah, go ahead, Ed, covered it? tell us. Yeah, tell us what you, please. Okay, so evidently uh, the round chrome tube, there'll be a slug that's been pressed into the bottom at the factory with threads on it. Now he's already tightened it so much that the slug slid down the tube. Can't be tightened anymore. So uh, I suggested to him, uh, he gets his big strong friend to come and hold the tube so he can do the unwrenching. And then uh, they'll have to push the slug back up in the tube a little bit and put some screws in it so it stays in that position. And then they can ferociously tighten it all day long, no problem. And there was two other people in there. I don't know where they went, but we were all in agreement. Sounds great. Thanks for your help, Ed. It's gonna be nice when we can do this in person again. I enjoy the uh, social aspect of it. Yeah, hey, did you sign up to get a free book? Would you like one? Um, I'm sorry, the, who are you talking to? You. Oh, a uh, book on what? Uh, um, Patty's got one right here. Draw Hi, Ed. Oh. Hi, Ed. I, I gave a little intro at the beginning, but I'm happy to say it again. It's Drawdown, the most comprehensive plan ever proposed to reverse global warming. So this is part of um, a series of events that we've been doing this whole spring. And you actually, because you registered for this event, you can, and everybody who's here, you should be able to get a a book of your own and you can pick it up just because we're closed right now. Uh, or I, I talked to Armando, maybe we can mail them to people, Kirsten. But um, okay. if you want that, uh, we can definitely get you one. We have about 60 copies left still. So we have plenty, it's um, really but it's a really beautiful, I don't know if you can see it, but it's, it's a beautifully um, designed book. And um, it talks about like a hundred different strategies that are um, ways that we, um, can actually bring down um, greenhouse emissions to reverse um, climate change. So this is all part of Book to Action. You guys are all participating in activity that promotes sustainability and you get a free book. Win-win. Can I ask a question? Yes, of course. Sounds like you've probably read it. Mm -hmm. um, is this kind of on the global corporate level or for an individual? It's everything, it's global, it's what countries are doing right. Um, it's it's what we can do individually. Go ahead, Patty, you know more than I do. No, 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 she's absolutely right. I'm nodding just because uh, Kirsten was right on the money with that. And it's written by, I, I hear where you're, where you're coming from, where you're coming from, Ed, and I totally, um, I totally see, understand your hesitancy, but it's actually written by an environmentalist and he has, um, kind of taken all, it's an amalgam of all of this research from around the world, and you're right, and that's what I love about it as well, and from students and actual farmers, people mm -hmm. who have worked um, and had their hands actually dirty, not just someone saying, oh, okay, I can put the money in here, but they'll have, for example, a farmer for, from Burkina Faso, for example, who helped um, improve the soil of his farm and showed all his neighbors how to improve their farms. And it's actually, I absolutely appreciate your perspective because it really is a lot more, um, not just impressive, but inspiring. That's the word that I want to say. It's inspiring to hear what people who are um, involved in it in their own personal lives and how they're changing their communities right. by doing something as simple as intercropping trees in his farm. That's what the guy in Burkina Faso did. But um, I recommend was... that you look at it. Mm -hmm. My concern yeah. was, you know, if it was just strictly political or 
right. um, re, uh, fixes on a huge, large scale. Right. Well, I can't do much Absolutely. about that. Absolutely. And <laughs> if I, I was Bill Gates, I, maybe I could, but. Right. I completely hear you on that end because sometimes when I listen to the news and me and Armando were saying this and we we're hearing about um, climate change, we feel discouraged, right? Because it's like, oh, I can, I can recycle, I can um, use a water bottle or something reusable to have my drink, but I'm not going to change climate change. But this book, I assure you, will make you feel a little bit more positive about the issue. Great. Oh, I have a side comment. Yeah. Peter, quit ducking around. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is this PG? Sorry. Uh, uh, I'll tell you what, um, put my name toward the bottom of the list. Okay. If everyone wants one more than I do, that's fine. We have enough for that? that one, Ed. I, I really, you know, what, what I really appreciated was um, just up-to-date research, up-to-date information going, you know, what Germany's doing right with solar um, power in homes and you know, what each country is doing and what's yeah. going on globally that's yeah. making a difference, which is really encouraging. And also just like the fact that solar is becoming more and more affordable, like exponentially more and more affordable. It's, it's happening so fast that they can hardly keep up with um, how it's becoming more affordable, which is encouraging to me because that'd be something I'd love to add. But also like- when And the world had tankless water heaters <laughs> way before the U.S. would accept them. Yeah, I got one. I inherited when I got my house, but yeah, it's, um, what's nice is that it's encouraging. There's definitely things that we can do, you know, on the small level and scaling up that can actually reverse global warming. And um, it's, it's really one of the best things I've read on the topic. And it's so easy to get overwhelmed on this topic, but this is really accessible and inspiring. It's written right. in a way, it's really written in a way to um, not involve a lot of jargon. And he, you're right, he does take away all of the po politics behind it. Mm -hmm. Because he said, this is not a blue or red issue. Yeah. It's for all humanity, no matter who, what party you belong to. Um, the issue of climate change has no um, political boundaries to it. So, yeah. And it's right, it's true. But that's how it plays out a lot in this country. But I get your hesitancy, but yeah, I'll put your name down. And um, so I'm unfamiliar. I know I've signed up for this, but I don't recall if I ever gave my address. Is that on file or? Do you have a library card with us? No. I can no. just email you. I'll get the list from Kirsten. And then if okay. you're interested in it, I'll definitely, yeah, because our supervisor really wants these to get pushed out so people can read it. So, Cause we're librarians. <laughs> But let me, when I get your email address, I'll, I'll connect with you, Ed. Thank you. I think I'll check with you, Peter, because I don't know if I saw Ed on the list for the fixers. I emailed oh, I, some of the local fixers, but I didn't know everybody who was local, too. Ed, are you getting the emails from me announcing these virtual fix clinics? Yes, mm -hmm. and I did sign up, and I got your Zoom link, so I think I okay. should have been on the list. Yeah, I got you right now. We'll find you, Ed. All right, then I'm guessing is this over then? Well, well you can go look at another room. You can yeah. keep fixing. Oh. Oh. Do you want to enjoy um, it? Is anyone having a problem? Or I guess there's no way to know the status of what's going on. Uh, no, you could do us a favor and go around. And start, you know, go, go you work in the typewriter room. Oh. No. I'm not so good with typewriters. You don't have to. <laughs> but it's about learning for you too, okay? It's about it's about developing additional skills besides the things that you care about. You know, it's it's okay to go in and ask questions. We have a lot of observers. Mm -hmm. The whole okay. point is that we cross train and learn about all sorts of stuff. Yeah. I guess I'll go observe then and learn something. Great. Yeah, it's definitely about sharing knowledge too. Once you know, right. you share your knowledge as well. Thanks. Clearly know a lot. <laughs> um, Josie, are you having issues? Do you need to, um, you're muted. Tomas, do you want to go back to 14? Yeah, let's try. Hi, Pete. Oh, yeah. sorry. Go ahead. No, I, I was going to tell Peter, no, this is my first time. And I was staying in the, um, in the room with 
uh, Myra and the printer for a long time, but just watching her uh, trying to install it and we couldn't really see. So I thought I'd check in on some of the other breakout rooms just to get practice. But um, anyway, I, I think um, everybody's in the middle of their projects and I think I'm just gonna stay here. <laughs> oh, you can hang out with us. Yeah. We're the closest. For sure, you're, you're, we're not that interesting. You wanna go look at some other stuff? <laughs> well, you know, I have to tell you, Peter and everybody else, my sister, Cynthia, has been just raving about this Fix-It clinic for so long. And um, I have several things that are broken and, I told her about my latest uh, comment I heard from a salesman about my printer. He says, you know, printers are not made to last a long time. They're just made for disposal when they don't work. But I thought, well, I can't spend like two to $300 every time a printer breaks. Mm -hmm. So right now I'm just trying to do what the printer screen tells me to do. I installed new um, ink cartridges and then I got a message telling me to clean it so I didn't know what to clean and I thought oh, today's a good day to ask and I happened you know today was a, a the question I asked this morning okay it looks like Joe is back Joe do you want to report back on the sewing machine is that she's not there oh there no. she is you're muted still Joe You're still muted, Joe. I just asked her to unmute. That's it, thank you. No, so the problem with the sewing machine is that uh, when the, the top thread comes down, it doesn't loop around the bottom thread. They don't, they're not in harmony and the, the timing is wrong. So Frank put me in the direction of some various bits to loosen and tighten. And um, I will do that when that, and also a, a YouTube video when I've got a little bit more patience because it's um, half past eight here <laughs> in the evening. And, and I did text Cece. She didn't show up this week because she didn't see me sewing machine schedule. Oh, okay. Had I known, I would have asked her to show up, but I texted her, it looks like she hasn't joined. Okay, um, well, but... don't, don't worry. It's, um, it's a machine that came from my uh, charity shop yesterday. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's not desperate, but, you know, obviously I've, I, I like the challenge to, to get it going. If I can, then I've learned a bit more how it works because I've been a bit scared to take backs off and sides off and stuff. But uh, no, that's great. They said so they really helped there. It's really good. No, it's great that you're willing to use it as a learning exercise because well, it's well, already broken. Yeah. You have nothing to lose. It's a free sewing machine. So, yeah. you know. Well, I, I keep finding things that I didn't realize, like some sewing machines, if you have it set to the bobbin wind, it, it it will not move. You can't get the needle to go up and down. I'm like, why is that? Why is that? Then I realized the bobbin wind was on, but that's not the same as every sewing machine. So it just, you know, you, you do learn things. My dad was an engineer. He'd be proud of me. <laughs> You're doing great. It's great to have you every time. Uh, it's always a thrill to have you guys. I'm trying to move more people to the server though. And Cece's on that too. So I'd love to work with you at some point because you can show video and audio and all sorts of stuff there too. I've had a look at it. I know there's a mending corner, which I can't remember the lady's name. She was from the Canadian University. And, but it coincided with something that I already do. But then that's not happening. It's an online talk. And that's not happening at the minute until next week. I think I could maybe come on next week and see if I could work out how to do it. <laughs> now, I think what I, we need to get a critical mass of people interacting on the server. But yeah. in the meantime, what I'm going to do is be the person who tries to arrange schedule, schedules, as you would say oh. in the UK, so, <laughs> that we, so that everybody can pretty much know we're gonna meet in the server, in the mending room at this time to work on Joanne's sewing machine, yeah. basically. Kind of thing, and, yeah. I'll, and I'll coordinate with CC and you, and then we'll broadcast it to everybody else and see who shows up. Yeah, I mean, think because things are opening up again here. I'm going to start. I'm probably going to be doing something else entirely on Thursdays. <laughs> so my my uh, my summer job is uh, working at the Opera House, and th Thursdays is one of my days, so I won't be able to do anything then. Anyway, who knows? I mean, because they're they're reducing the numbers in the audience for you know social distancing, they need less bods, 
and uh, I might not be working as often, but still, I love it. I've missed it so much. <laughs> so cultured, your summer job is working in the opera house. Well, excuse <laughs> us. Well, it's, um, uh, do you have, a, have you heard of Glyndebourne? There's, I'd say there's probably five opera houses in the world, the top ones, the Met in New York, La Scala in Milan, um, the Sydney, and what's the other one? And then Glyndebourne, of course. But I'm part, I'm obviously biased. I think Glyndebourne's the best. And it's it's um, a beautiful opera house built 25 years ago in the grounds of a, I think it's originally a Jacobean country house where the, 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 the guy who started it lived and his family still live. And the opera is inside, but everybody picnics in the gardens, in the sunshine, Aww. full evening dress, you know, champagne, silverware, everything. And it's just, it's just brilliant. And it's the, it is, I love opera and it's the best, it's the best I've ever seen, I have to say. That it's not the only, I've just had a comment from my, my niece. It's not the only I've ever seen, thank you very much. <laughs> Oh dear. Well, that sounds really beautiful, Joe. Honestly. That is wonderful. Yeah, yeah. And the picnic, that's the picnic idea is perfect for these times because you're outdoors. And yeah. It's a little they, safer. They, they have built, um, a actually the story is John Christie mm -hmm. uh, fell in love with an opera singer. So John Christie is the guy that started it. He decided um, he was going to, first he built, it's called the organ room. It was built in 1920s, but it looks like the house for her to perform and for him to have soirees. Then he decided to build her an opera house. Wow. And at the same time, um, he decided to start a festival. And he originally wanted to be Wagner, but this is 1930 something. So German music wasn't terribly popular. Mm -hmm. um, in the culture obviously right. and the, there's two the two uh, german guys i think one was belgian and two germans started it with him they were the the uh, the musical talent the director and they said it's got to be mozart and he went oh okay and so <laughs> 1934 was the first performance mm. and then i think they built did they build restaurants i think there was some inside dining as then and then in 94, I think it was 92 to 94, they decided to rebuild the, the whole auditorium, which is the most amazing auditorium. And um, yeah, it's just a beautiful place to visit. Beautiful place to hear opera. Yeah. And it's only down the road from me. <laughs> so if you ever come to England. Yes, <laughs> it's on my come list. Come to Lineborn. <laughs> And if you let me know, I'll probably be able to get you either a free or a cheap ticket. Oh, that's so sweet. I'm excited. I'm there next week. <laughs> oh, sorry, not next week. <laughs> it starts the, the, the season, the, summer, the festival goes from the end of May to the end of August. I see. That's nice. Yeah. I mean, and it still rains in, in you know, middle of July. And we have tents and we have umbrellas and... God knows what for the poor audience members is standing there in their in their beautiful evening dresses getting soaked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When that happens, though, you never forget it. Things like that. So oh, it, adds, it adds to the drama of it. <laughs> it, does, it does. Yeah. One time we had um, there was a huge. There was it was raining like you would not believe. It was just chucking it out the sky. And I was so how the, the auditorium was constructed, you go down to the stalls rather than straight ahead to the stalls. Mm -hmm. So I was down at one of the doors and I could hear the guys with these massive great brooms sweeping the water away from the auditorium. Wow. Mm -hmm. And then we discovered afterwards that the uh, some of the, the dressing rooms in the basement had flooded. They were holding the water back from the, the orchestra pit and trying to rescue all the technology before it all blew up. And you wouldn't have known. <laughs> it was very dramatic. Are they all, oh God, they've been all frozen. No, they haven't frozen. <laughs> <laughs> so what's oh, that, what you, anybody you... else been up to? We're just, we're just living our lives away in boring Northern California. Oh, it's, surely it's not that boring. I've, I've been a couple of times. I like California. 
it's gorgeous outside. I'm working in the library right now, but it's nice and sunny and we're slightly opening up, but I think there's like that still that level of anxiety that's yeah. that people are feeling. Um, so we'll, we'll get through it. I'm, I'm a yeah. positive person. I just feel like uh, we're trying to be really careful. And I think that's a good thing. Absolutely. I've had my first dose of vaccine. Good. And um, it's, I think they say something like 89% protective. But yeah, I'm yeah. still going to wear a mask and absolutely all absolutely. that, you know, and I think most sensible people are. Absolutely. I mean, it doesn't, it's not a free for all once you get vaccinated, right? I mean, we still have to I think, think about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then there's a variant, there's the Kent variant from here, and there's a South African variant, and then there's a Brazilian variant. And I mean, yeah, God yeah. knows. Yeah. Absolutely. Right, I'm going to be back in a sec. I'm just going to do something. Oh. Thomas, you've been trying to, in the chat, you say you have a challenge that you want people to work on. Yes, I do. Shall I show you? Well, let's see what we can do here. (laughs) What is that? It's a battery pack from from a professional... uh, or hedge cutter, or how do you say that? And the, the challenge is, uh, how do you remove uh, 70 uh, one-way screws? And a number of them are, are um, uh, sunk, sunken into, uh, yeah, into plastic. So you, you can't take, you don't, can't take, uh, uh, how you call it? You can't take uh, 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 how do you call it? Uh, pliers, pins, pin, uh. wrench, pliers. Yeah. Hang on. Yeah, what's th- this? That's a pliers. Pliers, needle, okay. a needle nose pliers. Call yeah. It. So you you can't you can't reach the screws. That's a nice challenge, isn't it? That You're, sounds really tough. You know, like can you, can you drill them out? But it's still drilling out seventy screw heads. They're one way, or they're just some specialty screw head. It's the the the, the one way. Uh, screws which you screw in with a, a flat hat uh, screwdriver. Yeah, no, that sounds really good. Really so, so it's not a security torx or a tri wing or anything like it. No. Is that what you're working on? Uh, looking down at and working on. Yeah, for the moment. Uh, yeah. Hold it up again. I'm just curious. It's it's for what does it go to? Uh, and and what is this battery pack for? Well, I'll I'll look it up and and I'll I'll, I'll put it in the chat. Uh, sorry. But it's a garden tool. It's a it's a yeah. It's a professional uh, garden tool. How many volts? Forty. Okay. But but uh, I'm uh, I'm measuring only fourteen. And those are lithium ion or? Not I guess so. Little... They, they they have the, the the they have the size of eighteen six fifty cells. Yeah. Okay. I went to see if I could find my pink needle nose pliers because it looks a little bit longer. So maybe you can. Um... With like a longer. Uh, Thomas is in a maker space in Belgium. He's got everything he needs. He's got all those. No. <laughs> I don't think you have a pink one though. <laughs> no, no, no. It would be nice. Uh, uh, pink ones are known for for being the excellent one, top uh, professional Sorry? ones. <laughs> I, I'm gonna provide proof. Hold on, I'll go get it for you. I don't have the pliers, but I have the wrench in pink. 
there's got to be a way if they if they constructed it that way you're trying to no, they constructed inside. it one way they did not intend for anybody to disassemble this right wow. I mean, from, exactly yeah what is the brand what, what who's the manufacturer yeah it uh it's a french manufacturer mm. blank or pelon pink this is just my wrench but i have a set of pink tools because my dad got me a set of pink tools when i became an adult it lasted a long time but i just broke the needle on his pliers so i don't know how i broke them but i need new ones probably not pink though <laughs> you can't control your force apparently so right <laughs> it's it's super strong. stronger than she she knows yeah obviously <laughs> You know, when we start our tool lending, Kirsten, that might be, you. I might tap into your your uh, knowledge about uh, what the best tools are to, okay. to lend out. Well, the, the, this is this is for a tool library. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're part of yeah. a. Okay, that's great. Yeah. I didn't know that, Tomas. All right, you couldn't. Uh, so, <laughs> what yeah. what type of tools are the most popular over there in Belgium? I'm just wondering. Well, um, this one we're uh, we're just setting up. We are, we hope to open in in May. Oh. But, but uh, 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 I was also uh, involved with uh, another uh, tool library in Leuven, where I lived previously, and uh, uh, to, uh, 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 with uh, another uh, fixer who is also in this in this uh, fix it clinic, Angel. Um, and yeah, he, he's the he's the the head wizard of the the, the tool library. Uh, but um, the two libraries in Belgium, they um, they are mainly focused on the do it yourself and um, how do you call it construction, uh, re 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 renovating and stuff. So, um, what do you call it? Uh, uh, hammer drills. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, and screwdriver yeah. sets and things like that. Yeah, it's yeah. the same thing here. Painting, They're mostly painting sets. right. Gardening and construction tools are what most tool lending libraries offer. Not the kinds of electronics types of tools that we are or tech that we do here, mm -hmm. right? Um, but you know, things are becoming more and more a combination of hardware and software. Like here's this gardening tool that he has that has all these lithium ion batteries in it. Yeah, yeah. More and more, this is the, we're gonna have to get facile. We're gonna have to get, facile, gonna have to get, get good at this stuff too. Right. Mm. Yeah. Adapt, the, be adaptive. In, 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 um, in Magbar, in Leuven, the, the, the tool library, we made sure we have the, 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 the full, um, how do you call it? I fix it uh, uh, set, professional set. Uh, mm. Which is more for uh, Come on. Two kids. I've got a question. Yes. Um, working with Elizabeth on her typewriter, and she, um, we, we aren't getting enough visual on what she's doing. And what I suggest is, is that she start a Zoom meeting on her iPhone and then use her iPhone as a probe camera. Now, how do we do that? We seem to be having a problem. She could be, she could sign in. Does she have the Zoom app on her phone? She has Zoom on her phone, but she needs a meeting ID and she can't find a meeting ID or whatever it's oh. needed. To, I'm not a Zoom expert, so I, I. I got a link, hold on. I'll type it in here. Do you, do you want to go to that meeting and then? Uh, Which one, Elizabeth? 
Uh, Elizabeth in uh, the... Uh, does she have email on her iPhone? Is it an iPhone? Does she, get, does she get her email on the phone? Because she can just press the... Let's talk there. to her directly. Let me go. Well, Elizabeth's okay, yeah. brother typewriter. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Tomas, that's a very fancy toolkit. Definitely. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really good. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. If you come to the United States, you should go to visit iFixit in San Luis Obispo. I'm friends with the founder. His founder is Kyle and Luke. I've stayed at Kyle's house. They are, they're great people. Oh, nice. And it's just a wonderful, wonderful facility. I mean, he's, got, he's really got a wonderful setup there in San Luis Obispo. It's a beautiful place to visit. And okay. Um, amazing, you know, just yeah, it, it just we, we need people like like him to to, to make sure that we, we are able to repair stuff, huh? Yeah. Okay, so Molly, looks like Molly's back to report on the oven. You want to hit it, Molly? Sure. Yeah, I, I'll hand over the the reporting to Eric because he's going to have to decode a lot of what happened to me later because it moved very quickly for my skill set. So uh, we we determined that the, <clears throat> the the burner on the oven is operated by a, a temperature sensor that is probably a, a capillary tube that has fluid in it that goes up and, and pressurizes something in the control knob. Um, so we took the control knob all apart, which, you know, it was amazing that you could do it, but this is from the 60s. So you could take literally everything apart down to every nut and bolt and got in there and, and examined the mechanism and sort of figured out how it worked and how the adjustment mechanism worked. Um, and got to the point where I think we can we can heat it up. We can take a heat gun and, and heat up the sensor in a controlled manner and see if we can see the, the action, the actuation happening in there. And then uh, either either it works or we're hunting for a new switch because there's no, there's no disassembling it any further than we already did. But it was extremely helpful to have um, have people helping me try to wrap my head around the electrical versus the mechanical and uh, have some familiarity with how these type of sensors work, which I, I didn't have any. It was great. Yeah, and so I had a couple of fixed coaches actually email me in advance. And they thought that, uh, um, it was like a $20 part from Amazon you could order to replace the entire thing. I'm trying to find it now. Mm. Um, that, that apparently, yeah. sorry, I'm, I'm going to have a hard time doing this while I'm still on the Zoom, but maybe, but Molly, if you reach out to me, or I'll put it in the Global Fixer server or something. There okay. were a couple of people, one of the, one of the positives is that some of the Fixer coaches want to do research ahead of time, but that steals away from sort of the scripting of these things. So it's like, it's much more boring if we just tell you, oh, we know the answer. And it's possible they don't know the answer, okay? They're, they're speaking with incomplete information. So, um, so I'll send you, I'll send or forward you that email from that other fixer at some point. Geez, you know, this is one of those cool things where if I could just put it in the chat now, we could all look at it, but I'm never gonna find it. Yeah, there yeah. probably are a lot of generic, you know, um, capillary tube temperature sending units, but this looks like a pretty specialized mechanical interface between the 
the tube and the knob. I don't know how easy it, it would be to incorporate a different um, funding unit, but. Okay, thanks for that feedback. Okay, well, well, you're welcome to go around and hunt around and look at some other things if you want. Or Molly, it's always, Eric, it's always good to see you guys. So, yeah, it looks too. like there's still fixing going on. Yeah. Cool. I'm going to go look for a heat gun. Okay, maybe I'll go in the dishwasher room because we have a similar dishwasher. So Kirsten, we could also figure out how to start winding this down. I mean, we've been at it since we start putting people in the breakout rooms like one thirty, like sorry, eleven thirty or so. Should we go to the breakout rooms and see if people want to wrap it up? Well, no, or you can send out an announcement. Send out basically saying, oh. you know, we're, we're, we'd like to close out at one o'clock. Like you, I don't know how much time you and Patty have for this. So you know, basically. You know, we'd like to think about closing up, wrapping up in 20, in 18 minutes, <laughs> so. Do you want um, me to make a message or create a message for you, Kirsten? Okay. I'm halfway there. Yeah. Hmm. I thought I saw someone had already fixed something, number 14. Which is great. That's number 14. Yeah, but I wish they would report back when that happens. But. I know. So you can ring your bell. You can do it when when we come back. Thomas, um, you were in room 14. Where did something uh, what what was in that room and was it fixed? You're you're muted still. Yeah. I, I arrived in, in room 15, 14. The, the lady from the opera was there with uh, Oh, it's Joanne sewing machine. Okay. Yeah. Oh, good. I, I, I have to stop. Um, my wife wants to wants to sleep. So oh yeah, it's uh, twenty two ten. So uh, it was nice seeing you back. And uh, yeah, have a nice weekend. Bye. Tomas, are you on the are you on the global fixer? I know I keep flogging this thing, but are you on the global fixer server? Uh, not yet, but I have to go now. Okay. Bye. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Tomas. Bye. See you later. Bye. Thanks for sharing the survey link, Kathy. You're welcome. Did you know that Berkeley and I know Berkeley's tool collection mm -hmm. is accessible online, I think, their list and um, Oakland probably. Um, I have been in contact with Dan, so we're coming up with ideas and questions to ask him. Oh, great. We already have our um, green induction uh, um, stoves, so that's one thing. Oh. And then we had a bunch of um, craft uh, materials, crafting materials, like gardening materials that we want to loan out to people. So it's a start. Yeah. We want to spread it out and just um, do a soft open by the end of this year at least and add maybe we could add some science kits for the kids and adults i think adults yeah. like astronomy and things like that and did, livermore did like robot kits where you make your robot and program it and stuff that's really cool yeah that's a fun idea kirsten yeah uh, my buy nothing group has a traveling bin of craft supplies and um people add to it all the time. Like I, in fact, just dropped off supplies to be added to the bin at somebody's house a month or so ago. But it's neat. Everybody's just kind of like it travels. People take That's whatever really crafts. Crafts take a lot of. Thank you. That's really smart because a lot of craft um, materials are kind of expensive. When you, I was at Hobby Lobby yesterday and looking for some crafts for adults, and it's like, what do you do with, with, with it when you are done with that craft? You know, I'm sure there's like things that you can scrap or that you can share and it's funner. So, mm -hmm. or if you give up on the craft, which happens a lot, you can yes. 
pass it on. I did. It to the universe. <laughs> I did. I had some fancy art supplies that I shared with somebody because, you know, I it was sitting in a drawer taking up space and I wasn't using them. So I found somebody who wanted them. Right. Right. And it's now more than ever, it seems like people are wanting to create and um, use their creative muscles to do good. So I like it. I like the idea. So we'll probably have a mix, not just tools, but science kits and craft kits as well. So my friend that's my that's my vision. My friend works at that library in Berkeley and she said it's a little humorous because the people who work in the tool lending library are like tool people, right? Fixers and um, they know tools. And then they added all these kitchen things and patrons will ask them like, what is this for? And they're like, not generally familiar with bunt cake pans and KitchenAid mixers and stuff. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Like the so um, that's really funny. Although I'm sure um, there's some overlap, but yeah, <laughs> it was kind of hilarious. That sounds funny. Yeah, it's, it's, it, I love the um, the way that you can interpret tool lending or a library of things. So we're gonna call it library of things, but we definitely want to have tools. So this is helping me a lot, especially what Tomas sent me uh, yeah. or sent us that that picture. It's, it's a pretty intense kit. It's neat. In some ways, it's so neat to like, I can't wait to donate tools and stuff because I don't want to like stuff that's just sitting in my garage collecting dust all year that I use once a year. I'd much rather it be so used and enjoyed. The thing is, my vision would be that it stays in your garage until somebody needs it. Yeah. And then it moves to somebody else's garage. I mean, that somehow it's sort of like speaks to this broader wealth. I mean, I'm happy to sort of make the library center, central to this, but I know a, library, a lot of libraries are having trouble with that. And then if you have something big, like a rototiller or something, mm -hmm. you don't really want to store that at the library. You don't have the room. So yeah. I'd love to think about some way that we could keep that stuff around the city in some way. Or you know, maybe Faye has some sort of corporation yard or something for the city where she can keep some of the bigger stuff. Or, or at least or some, some, I'd love to create some virtual way for all those things in San Leandro. But that, that's what I've been talking to Kirsten about is, you know, can we create some sort of virtual community loaning mm. system regardless, you know, that. I mean, I definitely see the positives of, because that's what I, I first thought of. I'm like, how are we going to have these lawnmowers and ladders? And, you know, and then I think of our, our staff here and them like having to um, transport things and help people get them. But that's a, that's a really smart question about like having it kind of like an umbrella and having a lot of the larger materials and a lot of the larger machinery mm. stored somewhere else because I, I couldn't see that at first I was like are we going to limit ourselves to small things but I don't want to because obviously people need big big machines too so for me it's about the sewing machines so two things are happening with sewing machines one is that the best sewing machines ever made the ones with the steel gearing and stuff are basically from like the 1950s to the early 1980s. And, they're, and yet I see people who, you know, it's in the closet, they bring it out, they haven't oiled it in 30 years, it doesn't work. They figure, oh, this is a piece of junk. I'm gonna throw this away and buy a new one at Target or something, which really is junk, which has plastic gears and all that stuff. Right. So I'd love for basically all the sewing machines in San Leandro from that vintage, from the 50s to the early 70s, or you know, early 80s, to just be living in people's closets till somebody needs one and then move it along to the next person's closet. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I sorted a friend of mine saying she bought a sewing machine secondhand 20 years ago. It sat in her mother's house and then she got it back recently and all it needed was lubrication because it had just sat there and it was fantastic. It just needed some help. And like you say, Peter, some of the older sewing machines are amazing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely amazing, yeah. They're built like tanks. They can sew through heavy denim and fabrics, you know, and, and the oh, modern yeah. ones that people, and and there, there's nothing wrong with them. You know? Yeah. So. Yeah. In fact, I think the, re the reason that um, this sewing machine I'm working on isn't working, because it's a cheap one. You know, I don't know if you have Little and LD in the States, but it's a bit like Target. Mm -hmm. 
you know, that kind of thing. Discount oh, yeah. based. Some locations. Okay, Sorry? looks like Cook is Cookie back to report on her dishwasher? Tom, were you in that room too? Yeah, I was part of uh, the group uh, working on Cookie's dishwasher and um, her. Wait, can, wait, wait, was... let's see. Wait, Cookie, can, can, can Cookie tell us what her issue oh, is? Oh, sure. Yep, that would be great. Cookie, are you willing to unmute yeah, and tell us what went down? Actually, it's Christina. Oh, okay, Christina, okay. Um, so I learned how to remove the arm on the bottom and we looked at the um, filters and then uh, I put some detergent in and we um, ran a cycle or two. And uh, in addition, I um, someone told me how to, uh, I learned that there's a there's an arm on the top of the, a small arm on the top of the dishwasher and uh, how to check that the drain hole or that the um, cleaning arm holes are clear by, um, by turning it upside down and uh, running water in it in the sink and then looking to see if it comes out all of the holes. Um, and it seems that probably, oh, the dishwasher is not heating the water because although it was somewhat steamy, it wasn't super steamy, um, which is apparently uh, a challenging thing that involves removing the dishwasher from. So we uh, removed the panel at the bottom and uh, we kind of took a tour uh, and, and like looked at the screws at the top. Uh, so if I were to- we go. Yeah, Hello you just, all, are you hearing me now? Yep, and Christina's giving her report right now. Uh, if I were to, to get ambitious and try to try to uh, take the next step of like pulling the, the dishwasher out and apart and everything, um, I think I understand how I would do that. And then it's kind of a question of whether I feel comfortable doing that, which is another matter because uh, live electricity and whatnot. But um, I know more about my dishwasher and I feel like uh, it is fixable, so um, like paying someone to come wouldn't be a waste of money if I'm saying like, no, no, you need a new, new dishwasher, so that's that's very helpful. Tom, did you want to add anything to that? Um, I think she pretty well covered it, but basically we ran through uh, different aspects of the cycle and we verified water is coming in, uh, the motor is running and spraying water, then we verified the drain pump is draining, and so it was all those kinds of functions that we were able to do without tearing things apart. And so we know everything functioned, but the one thing we let the thing, it run and run and run and it should have heated the water more and it didn't seem like the water was getting hot. So that's a real suspect. And that does require then getting further into the machine. And that's what she was talking about is maybe next time, you know, uh, she'd, if she's got the courage to do it, we would walk her through that process of uh, actually removing the dishwasher and looking for the heater to uh, check that out and possibly replace it. Okay, thank you. Anybody else in that room wanna add anything? Okay, all right, so I see Myra's back. Myra, wants to tell us what, what transpired? Well, um, let's see. What transpired is we spent considerable amount of time trying to get the cables back in in such a way that I could actually put the rest of the printhead and everything else in. And um, we never did quite get it correct. And then there was a little clip along the side that the cables were supposed to go in, but it wasn't real clear whether all of the cables were going in there or some of them. But in the process, it was just a little bitty plastic piece, which I can show you, talk about small and thin. There it is, and it broke off. So now the question is uh, how to affix those cables where they're supposed to be. And Brian has suggested some sticky tape. And so I'm going to try that, but I'm, uh, it's still not quite clear. So it's really what he suggested is uh, that I get somebody to help so that somebody can hold one thing while I'm doing another thing. And also that I uh, go back and really 
start from the beginning and look at how it all came out so that I could know better how to put it back in. So I am going to try those various things to see if I can um, get it to work. At least there's a video which um, Brian has found for me, which is very good. And I will see if I can get my configuration to look like that configuration and put it back in. So if not, I may come back in a month from now and we'll try this again. And I do have um, Phil also help me and um, I'll see if I can do this, but I think I need patience and um, perhaps a helper. So that's, that's where I am and it's not working yet, but I know a lot more than I did a few hours ago. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Myra. Thank you. Anybody else who was in that room want to add anything? I'll just just contribute briefly, if I may, Peter, because um, uh, in, in the United Kingdom we have something called British Summertime, and that's what we're on now. So you may all think it's the morning. Here it's nine o'clock at night, and I'm getting a bit weary after <laughs> <laughs> after a day with the grandchildren. I'm just about done for now. Um, uh, Myra's pretty much summed up where we've got to. I think, I mean, she's incredibly tenacious and has done an amazing job on this, but it's a, it's a kind of job where if she was down the road, I'd go down and say, two pairs of hands will sort this. Um, and I know that California is a very small part of the world, so there's bound to be someone nearby. I mean, so many of you from California, it is just down the road, because we don't, you know, we only have about eight miles in England now left. <laughs> um, if someone could, if someone is available, so you can call upon someone to help her, um, the main purpose of that, seriously, is that someone can look at the video, which she's got, which I've put up, and you can all see, um, which will enable someone to look at the video and get the cables in the right order. I, I'm fairly positive that this can be put back together again, and that little bit of plastic that's snapped off is not the end of the world. But quite honestly, we just ran out of time. Um, so I think if someone can, if, she, if Myra has someone that can give her a hand, that'd be great. Um, and I know that Phil has been, my colleague Phil from this part of the world as well has been uh, advising it. So we'll do what we can to get you through it. And um, next time we see you, you'll be printing stuff, I'm sure. And if you don't mind, I'm going to go now. But it's been really great seeing you all. Okay, thank you so much again, Brian. Yeah, I've got to go and say goodbye to Prince Philip. Okay. <laughs> thank you, Brian. Bye-bye. Bye. So I saw Elizabeth with her typewriter, but it looks like she, she left without reporting back. Uh, I was in that room. And what we did, we had a, a, a real challenge uh, just getting so far on it that the information available was pathetic at best. Brother just didn't support this product at all. So, but be that as it may, we were able to get the top cover off and uh, she did discover once we got the top cover off that there was uh, uh, a lot of dust on uh, some gears and cables and pulleys and things like that. And so she was gonna go clean those up. And then she thought she was confident that she could get it back together again. And there, there was only one question. There's this correcting tape that needs to be rethread, and that could be complicated. A uh, couple of things is she wants to come back in a, in a month if she doesn't get this corrected. You know, if it's not working after she gets it all back together, she might need some help there. And she would like to continue on trying to fix this thing because apparently it has, uh, well, I, I applaud her on her persistence. The other thing, though, is that when we grabbed Kirsten to come in and, and uh, have her look up the iPhone. That was that was really key because she could then put the iPhone inside and we could look all around. Now, we need a way to easily connect up the iPhone. It was pretty easy once we knew how to do it, but we need to be regular at doing, having people hook up their, uh, connect their phone to the uh to the meeting that we're having here. Um, there was another part of that uh, connecting up. Let's see. Well, I forgot. I'm an okay. old guy. Anyway, right. so having the, uh, having the phone 
another phone, another camera available. So we can look at look in there. That's that was really helpful. Okay, and I see Rachel's group is back. Rachel, are you ready to report back on the um, toaster oven? Rachel. Okay. Somebody else in that room. A whole bunch of you are back now. Yeah. Oh, um, we spend we spend most of the time figuring out how to take the unit apart because. Uh, Rachel didn't have a long screwdriver, which you need to enter from the sides to take the feet up. But eventually we figured it out. We took it apart and uh, um, uh, we didn't get too far uh, with the actual uh, uh, analysis because the heating elements uh, are, uh, you know, they are well insulated and they go behind the circuit board. <coughs> And uh, all the wires are bundled, so it's hard to like reach in there and uh, measure things up. And uh, we did measure a few of the heating elements. It's a, we looked at the service manual that we found. It has five heating elements and a fan, and each one is powered separately with a triac. So it's clearly not a thermal fuse or something because that one is common to all of them. And because the fan comes on, you know that uh, um, the power is getting to all the heating elements, just the microprocessor is not powering them up or they are maybe uh, the heating elements of it. But we, can't, we couldn't measure them because it's hard to access. So Two. we're planning to continue. Uh, don't know exactly when, but we will continue. We exchange messages. So, so the good news is this, this complicated Brevel toaster oven actually has um, some parts on e-replacement parts in other places. There's a bit of a service manual with a schematic diagram. Um, the commonly replaceable parts can be replaced. The heating elements and, and um, thermal fuse are on connectors and are low priced. But we're thinking what's probably broken is something on the microprocessor control board. So it, it's another level of digging to get there. And um, you know, at this point, the easy clues didn't yield fruit. Um, the next step would be put it on a bench with a meter, take it through the cycles while it's powered on and see what's going on to get some more clues, which is obviously beyond the scope of what we're doing right today. So um, Doran volunteered to go to harvest this thing and uh, maybe work on it himself, but uh, it's an expensive enough unit that we can't dis just say discard this now um, because the parts are available. But as you can see, it's just, uh, you know, it's a complicated beast as toaster ovens go. Um, but worth, worth the next effort, but it's a 300 level repair at this point. <laughs> hey, Rachel, do you want to add anything to that? Yeah. I'd love to hear from you. Oh, you're muted still, Rachel. Of course, yeah. Just thank you, it was very helpful walking through this. Thought I wouldn't be able to get the cover off initially, but managed with, a, with an electronic screwdriver set for the thin one. And yeah, I think everybody's very resourceful finding the schematics and diagrams too. And Rachel has a really cool options. multimeter and she knows how to use it now. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> sort of. Okay, well, thank, thank you everybody. You. Um, so we still got some breakout rooms open. Let's see, uh, no, the, print, the pencil sharpener. We haven't heard back from them. Uh, the pencil mm -hmm. sharpener, we've been, uh, getting more and more involved in this. The, uh, we have an enthusiastic person with a pencil sharpener and a very enthusiastic bunch of people who want to repair. I was the just in there uh, and they're still working on it. Uh, no, uh, we've, we've just finished. So, uh, well, no, we haven't finished, now. but it, it all fell apart again. But um, Kim knows what to do now. So I think we're all right. And she promises to buy a multimeter. Hurrah. <laughs> Were you able to verify that the electric motor did work? Yeah. Yeah, okay. that was fine. And the switch mechanism worked? Well, that's, that's, I think that's the, the most suspect part in that uh, the switches, I think the switch contacts, which are just um, leaf springs of copper or something, or brass, uh, just need to be cleaned with a emery board or a, or a file or something, because there is certainly some corrosion around there. And I hadn't cleaned that part. Oh. 
Yeah. Oh. So I will work on this. I am thrilled. Thank you all so much. Thanks, Kim. Thanks for bringing a cool item. <laughs> Said it's probably more complicated than a circuit board <laughs> oven. <laughs> yeah, the good news with the pencil sharpener, there's no electronics in there, so <laughs> that actually <laughs> is better. <laughs> yeah. So I don't see any. I think everybody is out of the breakout rooms. All the names are dimmed yeah. in the breakout rooms. And so, I just talked to Anne. They're coming. Oh. They are not quite done. I gave them two minutes. They wanted three. Thank you for reminding us. <laughs> Are you back in? Maybe not. I can close. Do you want me to close the room? No, no, I don't think um, that's. <laughs> so maybe. I was curious um, on that Frigidaire stove, were they able to do that? I may have missed the report on that. Molly stove? Yes. I missed it. Did you hear Molly's update, Peter? Yeah, yeah. They um they think it's a fairly complicated thing, but they got a lot of help in terms of moving it forward. So okay. cool. still a work in process then. It's uh it's a very nice stove to work on. You can take everything apart, including the the switch itself we took apart, but um, it's a capillary tube based, you know, remote temperature sending unit from the burner up to the switch. And it's most likely that the capillary tube is not functioning. He's going to try using a heat gun to actuate it and see if he can see any motion at the switch end, but it's most likely that it lost its seal or something. And it's, um, it's, a unique enough mechanism that I don't think a generic sending unit would work. Apparently these things are available occasionally as new old stock or, or pulls from other machines, but they're a couple hundred bucks a piece. So, oh. can, um, can, you buy, can you bypass it and just make it a, a normal heating element? <laughs> it a fancy... Yeah, that I think is an option because there is a different type of switch on the other elements that it could be retrofitted to that. Or we also gave him the more ambitious, uh, you know, modernization approach where you make it an electronically controlled uh, device and connect it to your Bluetooth phone as the programming the set point, just, just for the irony factor of a 60s uh, I, I, stove. I, I being. You know, it's I've always wondered, because I have a stove that has, you know, two burners that have you know, temperature controlled, whatever the hex that will set a particular temperature. And the other ones are just your, your regular high, medium, low thing. And it looks like they've been doing this for years. I don't know what the mindset of appliance manufacturers are, but why not make them all, you know, temperature controlled? I guess it, X, it costs more money and you sell the feature and they say, oh, you never really cook four things at once, do you? Or do you really care about the temperature of four things at once? It's an interesting marketing thing. Um, but it also means you don't have another one to compare with. Here's one that works, here's the one that doesn't. You only have one. So I don't understand appliance marketing. No, if I understand correctly, when you mentioned about the capillary tube uh, possibly losing its ability, uh, it sounds like it actually actuates a mechanical switch though that you can actually see and you can tell whether or not that's opening or closing mechanically, yeah. correct? Wow, yeah. okay. Wow. So yeah, most likely then you could zero in on the problem if you could uh, we got to that point and verify that the switch opens and closes. Yeah, we're hoping he can see any mechanical movement when he heats the element, but it might be sort of subtle, but yeah. Okay. Well, you can put a continuity tester across the switch. Well, we know the switch closes because the element is just on all the time. What doesn't happen is the thermal sending unit doesn't open the switch so yeah. right <laughs> sorry guys i'm going to close the kitchen aid mixer room and move them to here since they're the left they're the sole survivor i'm i'm gonna go be lovely to see you all hi joe it's 10 past nine at night and i'm gonna go sit and watch some telly with my niece <laughs>
So see you all soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Did Joe's machine get fixed? Not quite, but I've got some directions. What was the issue? It, it, the, um, uh, the thread, the top thread wasn't looping with the bottom thread. The timing is off with the, so it's it's a, a dance of that. Yes, yeah, yeah. I work on machines, so I know. So okay. you can probably find some directions to set the timing. It's not that hard to do. I've been I've been sent a link for a video, a YouTube video and a manual. So I'm I'm going to study those tomorrow. Yeah, basically there's two Allen screws on the on the hook. You loosen those, turn the machine to there's some marks on the sh on the needle shaft. There's a mm -hmm. top. There's two lines that are scribed in it for timing. Mm -hmm. you, you turn the wheel until that's in position. And then you move the hook till, till it lines up properly. And that's pretty much it. Ah, good stuff. Right. Yes, I'm learning more. Yeah. yeah. So okay, pretty brilliant. Much, pretty Thanks, much guys. any sewing machine timing yeah. thing will, will give you what you need to know. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Anne. Anne, bye. can you unmute? Bye, bye, bye Joe. Bye. Okay. You're still muted, Anne. Okay, there I am. Okay, thank you. Can you tell okay, us? Do you, want, do you want me to, to talk or is somebody yeah. else in line? Yes, yes, please. Give us your report. My turn? Okay, this was excruciatingly interesting. <laughs> um, we, we figured that, first of all, this is an older model. So what I had going in my mixer, and my um, mixer was different from what um, Howard and the other men had going in their mixers. They had newer mixers. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna to go to eBay and Amazon and order the parts. And then I assume after I get the parts from eBay and Amazon, um, we're gonna come back to fix it. And they're gonna go put me, walk me through install, you know, putting in the new parts. So that, as you said, that's an older mixer you have, which actually is probably better because it, it's more fixable and it's actually got a governor on the back side that uh controls the speed and so that's as what we're replacing we're replacing Pardon the me. governor that's the, what we're replacing it's actually oh. howard did a good diagnostics job and it's the uh phase control board right howard yeah it's a it's the phase control board and then the speed control board there's two boards in there a circuit board and a another board a, basically a speed control board and the governor uh, touches that speed control board and the circuit board the, the electronic component has failed unfortunately the speed control board the mechanical portion of that assembly uh has no lugs on it it's all soldered <laughs> and it won't it's not really compatible with the replacement a mechanical part i mean the replacement electronic part so uh, the conclusion we came to was replacement circuit board and the control board. They should work with the governor that's in there. Uh, and then once she gets those two parts, we're going to actually have to attach the power cord to the new <laughs> circuit board and the new control board. Uh, yeah, um, I found on those mechanical yeah. ones that yeah. what has happened sometimes. There's actually... The governor opens and closes the switch. Yep. And sometimes that uh, position of the switch gets out where it's not able to actuate it the way it should uh, yep. in yep. order to open and close that. And there's a capacitor also that goes across there so that it doesn't um, spark every time it opens and closes. Right. And that capacitor sometimes goes bad or there's a resistor in there also. That's what that control board is. That control board is the is those two things that kind of okay. level out the uh, the activity from the governor. Correct, yep. And that resistor, it's actually a big ceramic resistor and uh, it presses in between two prongs. And yeah. sometimes those ends get um, messed up, you know, where that resistor yep. goes down. Yep. Yep. It, it's different in the kitchen aid we were working on, Tom, but I know what you're talking about because we worked on, well, what was that? It wasn't a kitchen aid. Mm, 
it was, <laughs> it was, it, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. It was, yep. So it's the same function. It's just the form is different in that kitchen aid. It's got a little tiny circuit board that has both of those components in it. And it's okay. since given up the ghost. Gotcha. So, and it, it's, it's going to be tough, a tough repair when we get the parts because we're going to be trying to take the new replacement parts and fit them into a, an older unit because it's uh, because the part numbers match and, and it, it should be doable. <laughs> Certainly better than buying a new three hundred and fifty dollar mixer or whatever they go. Listen, at. anything's better than nothing. Even if it doesn't <laughs> work, I'll be happy. You know, sure. even if we can't yeah. do it. Well, and that, that you're the kind of customer we like. <laughs> yeah, I'm easy going. <laughs> Absolutely. You say. <laughs> Thank you for putting the effort in. So, do you know what yeah. component failed? Uh, was it the triac or? Yeah, no, it, we haven't done circuit level uh, diagnostics on the board. It's probably beyond the scope of our uh, capabilities at this time. So all we're doing is we pointed her towards a twenty dollar board on eBay and a uh, there's a yeah, the total's about thirty seven dollars. I think so. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. both boards from two different places. So it's worth having a go. Yeah, yeah. It's about yeah. sixteen and, and nineteen or something. Well, there you go. Okay. Okay, okay I everybody. got it. I, I got it. I'm there. So today we've done great work. Thank you again for everybody for participating. Um, we, you know, it's been two hour, over two hours, but you know, look at look, we've got two full windows of people here still. So, <laughs> but you want to leave while everyone's still having a good time. So um, I want to thank that's why Kirsten we're still here <laughs> for, for for hosting us. And remember, we can continue to do this stuff on the Discord server too. So please join that because we're trying to get more activity there be between these regularly scheduled Zooms, you know, to try and get more, more of this sort of collaboration going on worldwide. So What's the Discord server? I'll send you information. Kim, email me and I'll send you information on it. Okay. Calvin Holmes. Hey, Peter. Yes, sir. Peter? Yes. Peter is. Is this gonna? This is gonna all be recorded, so we can access it. How? Like, if we, if I want to get back to the chat, is there a way I can access the chat? Yeah, I'll post the link to that. Email me, and I'll post to you how to get to that. So I, I email you. I want the post to our chat on. Okay, how about that? No, well, I don't know if it'll have the chat in your window in your breakout room, and the, all the stuff that happened in your breakout room aren't rec isn't recorded. It's only oh, the it stuff happening here. in this main okay. room. Okay, all right. I just was wondering because just yeah. as a safety valve, but I, I we're okay. I recorded most of that information. Yeah, okay. our chat went to everyone, unfortunately. I think it said everyone. So, I, well, but it meant everyone in, in the breakout room, right? It said it said and this is Discord. What was that? What was that chat? Who said that? Peter Someone said, and this chat is fixed. New questions are in the Discord. Somebody channel. send her the Discord link. It's it's a and it's a it's a social media chat room, and and I fix it. Fix it clinic has a a room there, and that's where you can go and ask new questions any time of day or night. You don't have to wait for a clinic to start. How do I? How do do I? Where do I find that? On is Peter's that on gonna Facebook? going to send you the information. Yeah, can right. you put so, it in the chat? Peter, Peter has the info. He can send in an email. So I email Peter for the Discord channel? Yeah. No, Peter's yeah, yeah. going to do I'll, that. Send that to you. Yeah. OK, I got my I got my information there. Okay, I'm going to write this down. Thanks, everybody, for joining us this time. Thank you Thanks, so much. Just let me know. You can email me if you want a copy of the book. We might be able to mail them out to you. Um, so we've got lots of free books to hand out. Thank you all so much for participating. This has been super fun. Peter, any last words? No, it's party on guys. It's been great as always. Thanks See so you much. Uh, Peter, Peter, how many batteries does your duck take? <laughs> Bye. Zero. Why is that? Well, I, I don't know how to post this, but I think I just found the root of the problem there was another piece that should have sat side first before I tried to put all those wires in. So I will post that on the Discord server and maybe I'll get a response from somebody. Okay, thank you. It was this little piece. Maybe I took it out.